Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be talking about DOM manipulation in React. So this is something that a lot of beginners wonder on about because basically when you work with JavaScript before working with React, um, you're very used to literally directly manipulating the DOM. So for those who don't know, the DOM is the document object model. It is basically a huge object containing all the different HTML elements in a page. So basically, HTML is just just imagine it as an object containing every single element and their actions, their functions, everything related to each element in your page, right? So with JavaScript, you can just access that object and you can manipulate it by changing its properties, also adding more elements to the objects, also doing like doing all that kind of stuff, right? However, when a beginner who've never used React before start using it, they'll get really confused because they'll try to manipulate the DOM directly and they'll find it to be weird and then you they'll read a bunch of articles talking about why you shouldn't do this and that that's actually true in react it is a really bad practice um to to, to manipulate the dom directly and the reason for that is because react was built primarily just to solve that kind of issue react was actually built to make it easier for you to maintain your your dom uh, in the same state as your application so why would you directly like update the dom uh, when you can use all the different hooks and all the different aspects of React to do that for you. So that's actually why you shouldn't actually manipulate the DOM. There's many other reasons too. Um, it also makes the application look messy. So if you're a beginner and you're watching this video, I'm going to show you guys if you really, really need to manipulate the DOM, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And also why, like, what you can do um, to replace certain things like if you want to create an element or you want to change, for example, the class name of an element. I have here opened uh, a simple a JavaScript project. This isn't React, this is normal JavaScript. And you see that many times we, we access the element and just change its class name or change its inner HTML. And we don't do this in React. And I'm just going to go over how you can do this, how you can fix this kind of stuff. And we're going to be talking about a hook in React, which is really common, called the use ref hook. And I'm also going to explain what it means and how you can use that when you really need to manipulate the DOM. Okay, guys, so let's actually get into kind of the tutorial. And I'm going to actually, I built here an example to show you guys one of the basic, like very beginner um, examples to why, like how you can manipulate the DOM without actually accessing it. And I think that this is a great example because it will show you guys how to use states and why they are really important to actually fix that issue that we talked previously. So this is a very simple React application. There's nothing other than just this app.js and an app.css. What it did is I basically just created a div over here. It has a class name called circle and I have a button called changed to shape. Actually, that makes no sense. Wait, just change shape like this. And we have an app.css which contains two divs like two classes right here the circle class which just creates a circle as you can see and the square class which just creates a, a square and currently you can see that we have a circle in our screen and we have this button called ch change shape so basically what i want to do is i want to be able to click on this button and change this if this is a circle change this to a square and if this is a square when i click on this button i wanted to change it into the circle so how exactly do I do this? Like I have this class over here called square and I have this class here called circle. Like if I manually change this to square, you'll see that um, over here it will become the square, but I need to manually change it, right? So how do I make it so that um, it will do this automatically when I click on the button? And if you've worked with JavaScript before, you know that um, this can be done by just, as I mentioned before, accessing the DOM and just manually changing the class name for this um, to to square if you're in circle and to circle if you're in square. But you don't do this in React. And the reason why you don't do this is exactly what I talked about previously and also because it, there's a much easier way of doing this by using the use state hook. So if you're a beginner, um, this, is a, this is a very important hook. It's probably the most important one. Um, to access it, you have to import it. So you can just come here at the top where it says import react you can just put a, a comma or and just open up the, the square brackets and say use state you'll import it and here at the bottom you can just create a state a state is just a variable that when its value changes it will automatically trigger a re-render of the page so that it shows the new value for that 
for, for the variable, right? So that's extremely important because um, if you wanted to, like, I, I, it, it can be used in many different situations, right? But in this case, specifically, what we want is we want to create a state which is going to represent if it is a circle or not. It's going to be a Boolean called is circle. And basically, it will start as true because our class name should be circle. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say that our, we want our class name to be circle when is circle is true. And we want if it isn't true, we want it to be square. So that logic can be very simply done by creating the state here called is circle. And with states, we have to pass here as well a function that changes that, 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 that state. So set is circle. And it's going to be equal to use state. And it's going to be a Boolean, which is going to start as true, right? So initially, we want it to be a circle. So instead of just writing the class name over here, what we can do is we can directly use the, the logic, like or use the variable over here, the state, and just ask, okay, well, if this is a circle, so if circle, um, no, not if circle, is circle, um, we want to ask if it is, then we want to put a question mark and just pass, okay, I want the class name to be circle. If it isn't, we want the class name to be square. And this logic over here, this is common in JavaScript, um, you're just saying that we want to update this depending on the value of this circle. And on the button here, we want to basically just add this an on click event. And inside of here, we want to pass a function, which is going to set a circle to not a circle. And if you're a beginner, this might seem confusing. But basically, what I'm doing here is imagine in the beginning, a circle is true, right? So if it is true, we want the class name for this div to be circle. And if we click on this button, it's going to set the value of this circle equal to the opposite of its current value. So its current value is true, it's going to set it equal to false. And now it's a square. And if we click again, it's going to become true. So now it's a circle. This is the kind of logic that I'm talking about. And by the way, this isn't a tutorial on use state. So if you're truly a beginner and have never used use state before, um, I recommend I have other videos on it. So I recommend watching those first. So now let's test this logic by looking at our application. You can see that initially it's going to display the circle because we wrote this logic to show um, if is circle is equal to true, which it is initially, we want to display the class as circle. But when I click on this button, you'll see that it now becomes a square. If I click again, it becomes a circle. And I'm literally manipulating the DOM in theory. I'm changing the DOM's values and changing the class names of the DOM elements. However, I'm not directly accessing the element like you would do in normal JavaScript. And this is the beauty of, of React. And you can see it's really simple. Like if you're a beginner, then this might seem a bit weird, like a, a bit at the beginning. However, this you'll get it really fast because it is a very simple logic compared to what you usually have to do when you're using normal JavaScript. However, this might not be the case every single time, right? There, You might need to access the DOM like in some specific cases, right? So what are those cases? Well, a very important case, in my opinion, which I find a lot of people asking me about, um, how do I do that? And how like, how, how would I approach this in a real application? Well, this example is when you have an input, and you want to click on a button, like to submit that input to a form or something like that. And when you click the button, you want to clear the input, right? You want to basically erase what was previously written on the input. So let's actually do this. I'm going to erase everything we've done so far. And I'm going to create here an input of type text, like this text. And I'm just going to put a placeholder here and say something like write your name, it's going to be like an input where you write your name, something very simple. And we're going to have a button over here, which is just going to be something like submit. And I'm going to kind of like, let's take a look at that. It's over here, as you can see, I'm going to increase their size very simply by coming here. And I'm going to delete this CSS. I'm just going to say something like um, input. I'm going to give them a width of like 200 pixels and a height of like 50. Um, this is just so it looks a little bit better. But you can see right now that we have our input over here, and we have our button, right? And the idea is we want to write something over here, like we would normally write. And when we click on the submit button, it will automatically clear everything that was over here and reset it to how it was before, right? So how exactly do we do this? We can't just access we can do this with CSS, I believe. Um, so what what would be actually be the the normal approach would be to use a hook in react called the use ref hook. And this hook is very simply used to access 
um, mutable objects, which include the DOM. So basically, you can just set a reference to one of the elements in your React application, and you can manually edit its elements by just accessing its refs current. And I know that, se that seems weird, but I'm going to explain to you guys what this means as we get into working with this um, this hook. So to do that, we're going to come over here and we're just going to import the use ref hook like this. And we're going to just be basically going to create, we're going to use this to basically create a reference to one of the elements in our page. And then we're going to set the reference inside of the element. And I know that sounds weird, but we're going to just start over here so you guys can get it while we code. So basically, we're going to have to create a variable here, which is going to be basically a reference to one of the elements. So let's just call this name input, you can call it whatever you want. But this over here will be an object representing a mutable object representing this input right here. So we have to set it equal to use ref. And over here, we can literally just put anything. I'm gonna I like put, putting null. Um, it's just we don't have to actually set anything here. But you just put you can put null, which is which is, which is actually what I usually do. And it won't make any difference. So we just set a name input variable to be equal to a reference object. So now we have to reference this object somewhere in our application. So we do this in inside of the actual element that we want to set this object equal to. So basically here in the input is the actual element we want to reference. So inside of this, we can just pass a property called ref and pass the name input variable over here. So we're name input. And now whenever we access this name input, throughout the whole life cycle of our application, we're going to have the reference to the input that currently exists in our application. So this is great, because now in our on submit, we can basically just access this, um, this name input, whatever, where like, however we want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a function here called um, clear input. And it's just going to be a very simple function like this. And I'm just going to call it whenever we click on the on the submit button, right. So in the clear input, we're going to access the name input. And inside now that we have access to this reference, we can now access its object by just accessing the current. So current basically means like you're accessing the current object that like the, the current properties of that referenced object. So this is a great way of doing this, you can just come over here and access all the different HTML elements that exist in that element in, in the in that object, right. So and if we really want to check to see exactly what we can do with this, we can actually just console for now just console log the the actual element So name input dot current. And what this will do is it will just console log all the different properties of the object that we can actually mutate. So that's great. Let's just come over here. Um, let's open our console log like this. Um, I'm just going to clear it. And let's click on submit. And you can see that now we have this input right here I actually wanted to access the like the object in itself. But you can clearly see that um, when we click submit, it's making a correct reference to the input, right? We're console logging name input current. And it means that since it's showing the actual input, it means that it's working, we're, we're actually creating a reference. So what exactly can we do with this? Well, let's try to access something like um, the inputs value, right? Because remember, an input has a value and the value for that input, if you know JavaScript, you know that um, each every input has a value and the value is actually this right here that we're that we're writing. So if we're trying to access this, let's check to see if if it actually correctly console logs the what we wrote over here. So I wrote Pedro, let's click on submit and let's see if it will console log Pedro. And you can see clearly it's actually accessing the actual value. So that means that if we want to clear this input, all we have to do is we just want to come over here and say, name input. So name input dot current dot value. And we want to set it equal to an empty string. And that's great, because now we can just come over here. And I want to write my name like this. And when I click submit, you'll see that it will basically just erase everything, because it's mutating the object that we referenced in the beginning. So this is basically how you use the use ref hook to manipulate the DOM. And I would recommend it like, I don't think you guys should if, if you're a beginner, and you're wondering, okay, I want to follow best practices, just know that um, in most cases, you can solve stuff without using um, 
without actually referencing to a, an object. But in cases like this, um, it might be a good idea to do it. But just keep in mind that always try to find ways of doing it without actually manipulating the DOM directly. And you'll see that the React gets a lot easier. It gets a lot easier than than normal JavaScript. It, it is a better um, developer experience. And it's just a way to understand how to manipulate your project and actually build your application. So that's basically it for this video. Sorry that I didn't post on Monday. Um, actually, I just arrived in Canada. For those who don't, who don't know, I study here in Canada. I hadn't been here for the past like 10 months. And now I'm back at my university. And I don't even like I'm just <laughs> uh, like packing stuff. I'm I don't even know where I am, but basically it's been like um, a lot of work. So I'll be back um, like Friday. I'll post again. I'll be back in my regular schedule this week. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every single week, three times a week. And I would really appreciate it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.